Well, that's been, uh, that's been a bright spot that uh, we've been able to go in at halftime and address whatever issues uh, occurred in the first half. That happened in the last game we played against Duke, for sure. Uh, they were doing some things that we needed to adjust to, and the kids are um, they're really good at you know verbalizing and talking back and forth with us and, and being able to have really good football conversations, uh, not only on the sideline, but definitely at halftime when you need to have those back and forths they're able to tell us what they see. Uh, we're able to tell them what we see. And so they do, they do a really good job of adapting and adjusting to, um, you know, things that either we're, we've prepared for and we're just re reiterating, you know, what we need to do or uh, adjusting to new things. So they've, they've been really good with that. Uh, you know, I don't, I think they've always done a really nice job of trying to focus and, and absorb whatever information we're giving. Um, so I don't, I don't know what I would attribute that to because I don't really feel like there's been a change in that. I feel like they've always been um, really kind of all in and, and you know, wanting to, wanting to get the information to help us be a better defense. But uh, Certainly, they haven't lost that focus, but I don't know that I see a change anywhere in that. I guess where I'm getting at is for looser lines. They have said that they have been that way a little bit. They've been better on the field dealing with adversity. I thought as they've been a little more connected and less stressed and mentally, I guess. So, do you see that as a result? Of yeah, now, the, when you frame it like that, I do. I, I feel like this is a really close knit group. And, and one thing, and I've said this before, uh, obviously, we haven't played, uh, you know, there's times when we haven't played like we want to play. Uh, but through those times when it's not good and through the times when it's been poor, I think that's one of their biggest, um, I think it's one of their biggest positives that they bring to the table is that they don't panic, they stay together, they play together. And maybe it is because they're just, you know, kind of relaxed and, and you know, a little bit uh, not thinking too much and things of that nature, but just playing. Uh, I think that's definitely helped. Um, but they, they are not panickers now. They don't panic when things aren't going well. Uh, and to be honest with you, they know that our offense is really good and we can score at any time. So that always gives you a little bit of a cushion, to be honest with you, as a defensive guy. We know that our offense has been really productive. And, you know, all we have to do is do our job and not panic and, and you know, not stress. Just go out there and execute uh, because it's a team game. And, um, but I, I definitely see that with our guys as being a positive that they they don't panic and and we can adjust when we need to adjust uh, when we're not playing well uh, there's no finger pointing everybody just moves forward in the in in a positive direction uh, and i think that's a huge reason why in a lot of these games that are close and they've come down to the end uh, even though there's times when we haven't played great uh, we find that we have found a way uh, obviously to win most of these games and um so I, I think that's that's a, a definite positive attribute to our guys. Gene Mack called Van Kanda one of the best, run, the best running back in the country. He obviously puts pressure on the defense in a ton of different ways. If <laughs> there was one area that you know you have to be exceptional against him to in order to win the game. What what do you think that's? It'll be our pro, our approach angles with him on how we approach him. Uh, you know, a lot of his runs or second level runs where he breaks it to, you know to the second level sometimes past the linebackers right where the safeties have to save it or a corner has to save the ball and you can go back to the virginia tech game uh you know they had a, they had a tough time bottling him up so it's really when he gets to the second level of the defense second and third levels of the defense the approach angles from different guys um, making sure that all you know <laughs> we need all 11 guys available, right? So that means if I'm on the backside of a play that I'm getting off blocks, uh, you know, if I'm on the backside of a play and I'm not getting blocked, I'm approaching him at the right angle. He's got tremendous vision. Uh, he's got great speed. Uh, his ability to make cuts in the open field in the second level is what really separates him from pretty much everybody that I've seen. Uh, in his speed, uh, when, he, when he hits another gear, he's gone. So it's about approaching him correctly. Um, you know, if we miss a tackle, miss it correctly and send him to our help, 
uh, is really the main message that, you know, that we've had. And we worked a lot about, you know, in the off week, that's one of the things that we majored in is approaching the ball correctly, approaching, you know, tackling and the approach angles of the ball, uh, which we've been hot and cold on. So, but the way you approach him, particularly in the second and third levels is huge. Sure. Is there value there at all? Does that not matter since it's completely different defense and all that stuff? Like, what do you, how do you approach that? No, it's, it's, everything matters when you go back and watch, uh, you know, people that have done a, a good job defending him, uh, going back and watching. And we, we've, we've done that. We've gone back and looked at different teams, um, including our own from last year, uh, just to see what happened and, you know, what, uh, what, what, what they did well, what everybody did well against him. So, yeah, it's, it's definitely um, – look, he's already got 1,000 yards rushing, so there's not like a lot of people just shut him down this year, right? So you're looking for uh, – you're looking for, you know, games where guys can say, you know, I came out of that game and I feel pretty good about how we played him. So, um, yeah, it's, all of that is valuable. We have, we have. That that was a, that was a huge blow to our defense. I think not only you know just as a player, but what he brings, just in terms of mentality and the leadership. He's a quiet leader that everybody looks up to because of how he plays. Uh, it's been a big challenge. Um, I think KJ Hester has stepped up uh, the last couple of weeks. Uh, he's going to have to continue to improve and, and be better. That's a huge void, um, you know, in our defense of production. And um, whether it was he was getting sacks or blocking, you know, batting balls down or whatever, that doesn't account for how many times he had to be double teamed and they had to put two guys on him. So that, that's, that's, a huge, uh, that's a huge void in there. So K.J. Hester's um, stepped it up. Uh, I think the Miami game, he really played well. I was really proud of K.J. Uh, and then the young guys got to come on, right? The Travis Shaws of the world, um, they got to give us reps, which they have. Um, you've seen Keyshawn Silver in there some. Um, so the young guys got to come on. Uh, they're big frame guys, they're big body guys, but they got to play, you know, they got to play active and they got to play like Ray did, right? They got to get penetration on the other side of the line of scrimmage. Uh, and that's what Ray did. So um, it's really going to be by committee. Um, I don't know that there's one guy that you can say just comes in and all of a sudden everything's great because, you know, Ray, you know, Ray was a very productive guy. But KJ, I'm really proud of KJ. I think he's done a really, really nice job of filling in that spot. And then after him, it's really been cut by committee. And uh, we've got enough big frames to go down there and get it done. Uh, but everybody's going to have to play better. Do you see improvement from Travis? Does he improve from you know, August 1st to now? I do. I think he's moving in the right direction, for sure. Uh, I think he's starting to practice hard and understand that his role now has been elevated to a point where he has to play. And we need him to play. Uh, so he needs to take that and run with it. Um, it's a good thing for him. Um, that's what you want as a, as a freshman coming in, right? You want an opportunity, and he certainly got one now. He's definitely made strides. Uh, like everybody on our defense, he's got a lot of, you know, he's, he's got a lot of room for growth. Um, but he's going to be one of the guys that we're going to have to call on to, to, you know, keep elevating his game uh, as we, you know, as we get ourselves towards the end of the season. You know, as far as his uh, as far as his production, uh, as far as his football IQ, uh, I'll use a, a couple of North Carolina guys. When I was here the last time, they were younger, uh, but he has a combination of both of these guys in Cole Holcomb and Andre Smith. Uh, both of them were really good players um, for us before they were young at the time, but he's got uh, he's got a lot of the skills that Andre had. 
Um, Andre could play side to side. He was very physical. Um, Cole was too, and Cole was extremely uh, cerebral. He was a really, really uh, big football IQ guy. Said, studies the game. He, he understands the game. It's kind of innate in him. Now it's partly because some guys just get it and some don't, and he's got that. And then part of it is because he does his, his homework off the field when he's not in this building. And, you know, it's really cool as a coach when the game is happening and you can have conversations with guys during the game where they can really give you intelligent answers on what happened. Did the guard pull? Did this guy come here? No, it hit over here. It did not hit over here. Um, you know, he just has a lot of great football knowledge. Uh, and again, some of it's innate and some of it's because he studies the game so much, but he's such a pleasure to be around. Um, I asked him the other day, I said, would you like to lead the country in tackles or play 20 plays less a game because we're playing better on defense? He said, I'm not really sure. So um, it was a funny, it was a funny moment. But, um, but he's played a lot of plays and we, we don't have, we don't really have a choice, right? So um, he'll continue to get a lot of plays. Hopefully we can get him off the field and, you know, and, and get off the field ourselves and, and give him a little bit more of a blow, but he loves it. He, he didn't want it any other way. It was that way last year with him as well because he just loves the game. But he's one of those guys that you love to coach, you love everything about him. He comes to work every single day, mentally and physically, and there's nothing more we could ask out of him. So you talk about him giving you that feedback in real time about a guard pulling or whatever. I guess sometimes you get a guy on the phone or whatever who's just like, it's crazy out there, kind of like just sort of screaming at you, I guess, maybe. Is that how it goes? Yeah, there's some guys that see nothing but chaos. And there's some guys where the game is slowed down enough where they can literally tell you, you know, intelligently what's happening, happening out there. Um, and that usually comes with age and time and experience, right? When the game slows down for anybody, they're able to give you feedback in real time. Uh, and he's able to do that. But, you know, again, and he's not the only one. There's several guys that can do that. But I think that's definitely one of his greatest attributes, other than the leadership and all those things that you mentioned, uh, he's like another coach out there, and he, we can all have really, really good feedback. He said that one of the things you guys talked about working on was how he communicates with teammates on the field during a game, that sometimes he kind of fall into a strike with them and it would stress some teammates. He believes he's gotten better. Have you seen him in Yeah, I think he's gotten better. I think, you know, said such a competitor, he wants to win, and, and he can get excited. Um, he can get excited and, and – uh, you know, he has an edge to him at times, which is part of the reason, it's part of what makes him what he is, right? Like, I haven't seen a lot of great football players that don't have that edge. Uh, but I think what he's really tried to do is kind of bottle that up and communicate with guys on the sidelines and communicate during games with a little less emotion involved in it, especially when things, you know, might not be happening, you know, exactly the way we want him to. Uh, and, and he did need to do that because he does have that edge to him and I think he's gotten a lot better at it. But regardless how he communicates with everybody, uh, everybody knows where he's coming from, right? It's a place of I want to win and this is, you know, this is not acceptable. Uh, but he's, he's definitely gotten better at that. With the linebackers, I know Rob Ross has been beat up a little bit this year with injuries, but have you seen the growth from him that you would like to see with guys like Travis Shaw? Are you looking I'd like to see more growth. Uh, I could probably say that about everybody, right? But uh, I'd like to see more growth. I'd like to see more, you know, working on his craft at practice and, and being focused and locked in on what he has to do. And, and when he gets opportunities in games, uh, you know, that, you know, he delivers at a high, at a high rate. Uh, and he's done some really good things in some games. Um, he started to play more and then he got injured and, you know, now we're bringing him back and trying to work him back in. Uh, but um, Rod Ra's got a really, uh, he's a really talented young man, um, but he needs to bring his game to the next level. Troy's Conley, I think he's somewhat cleared on, on exact stats, but mm -hmm. when, he, when it comes back, how do you expect to use him? Is, what can you tell us about how you see him progressing practice? Right. Um, he's starting to work in on some, some defensive uh, schemes. 
Uh, same thing with special teams, and I think it's it's a it's kind of a weaning in process to see exactly what he can and can't do. I think every day he's feeling more confident with being able to make cuts, being able to change directions. I mean, when you have a knee situation, obviously that's that's the the main event, right? Do I feel confident enough to be able to plant and change directions and drive off that off that knee, off that leg? So I think he's day by day growing in terms of gaining that confidence. Uh, and so it's going to be a week to week progression to see exactly where he would land defensively. Uh, you know, and again, he's, you know, didn't go through spring practice and, you know, has really not been with us the lion's share of the fall. So it's how fast can he um, absorb the information as far as game plans and what we're doing uh, in combination with do I feel comfortable enough and do I feel confident enough on my on my leg to plant and cut and be the old JQ that that he was, which we know he's very talented. We know he's aggressive. We know he can tackle. We know all of those things. So really, it's going to be as the weeks go on, the combination of those two things happening: the confidence and uh, the absorbing of the scheme. How fast does that come along? And then we'll make those. You know, that's going to be a weekly decision. You know, moving forward, but he has started to wean himself back in, and right up to this point, uh, I feel like he feels confident in it. Gene, sort of along those lines, like you know, with, with the bye week and sort of hitting the reset button, so to speak. Like, is there anyone or a couple guys that haven't been playing as much that here you got five games in the regular season left? Would you like to start getting in there more here in the second half of the season? Who do you see coming on, maybe that that we haven't? Well, I think it's really pretty much the same characters uh, that you've seen uh, that have played sparingly, and we need to get them to a point where we can play them more. You've asked about them, Ra Ra being one. Uh, I think guys like Keyshawn Silver and Travis Shaw that you've seen some of, they've got to keep coming on. Um, you know, uh, guys like Day Day Holland uh, that. Uh, you know, coming, him coming off an injury as well, right? And, you know, having to go in and, and take some snaps in some games. Uh, guys like that coming on and, and, and trying to help us and, and give us some depth to the defense. Um, but for the most part, it's probably the same guys that you've seen, maybe sparingly. Uh, but, you know, we need, to, we need to get them to the point where they can play more. Yeah, that's a really good question. No, I don't think we're there yet. I think we're trying to work in that direction. Uh, we had a, a great team defensive meeting yesterday about that very thing, right? Doing your job. And so um, I think it matters to them. I think that they're trying to improve on the, account of, uh, on the accountability piece. Uh, have we arrived there yet? No, I don't think we have. Uh, but I think it's definitely gotten better and we're improving. And I think everybody understands, you know, that as the season goes on, uh, if we're going to continue to improve defensively, the, the accountability for every guy has to go up uh, and they have to be able to hold each other to that standard. So um, it's gotten better. Is it where we need it to be? No. Uh, but they're, they'll continue to work on it and they understand the importance of it. Good. Awesome, guys right. and ladies. Y'all have a great week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.